In this video, I'm going to talk about Newton's third law of motion. Often, people think of the third law of motion as this statement. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. However, I found that students that use this definition when they're answering exam and homework questions don't do very well. A little bit better is this second definition. For every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. And if we skip down here, the second statement is more clear because it makes it more clear that we're talking about force rather than motion. Okay, the third law is not about a ball hitting a wall and then the ball coming back. The ball goes forward and then the ball comes back. That's not what it's about. It's about during the interaction, the ball is pushing on the wall at the same time that the wall is pushing on the ball. The best statement, or at least in my opinion, the best statement is when object A exerts a force on object B, object B exerts a force back on object A that's just as big and it's in the opposite direction. Now, this is not as catchy as that first one. Okay, This first one right there, very catchy, easy to remember. Also, not very useful. Ends up leading to incorrect answers on exams and homeworks and quizzes. So, we'll, we'll sacrifice learning one that's a little bit more complicated and is going to help us really understand what Newton was talking about when he formulated the third law of motion. Another way that is pretty good, two interacting objects always exert equal and opposite forces on each other. And so these third and fourth statements here, they make it clear that we're talking about two forces, I'm sorry, that we're talking about two objects. Because one of the things that people get wrong, and I'm just going to put my two there, because my screen won't let me write it over here. We're talking about two objects being involved. We'll talk more about this later because the, the two forces that are talked about in the third law, the, these things that we're going to call a third law pair, they can't be acting on the same object. It doesn't work that way. And if you look at this, this one right here, it is super clear that one of those forces is acting on object B and one of those forces is acting on object A. So you have to have two objects that you're discussing. All right. Now, another thing to notice is that not all forces that are equal in size and opposite in direction are a third law pair of forces. And if you have two forces that are exerted on the same object, then it's definitely not a third law pair. So, for example, if you have a box sitting on the floor, you have a normal force and you have weight, those two forces, this is a free body diagram for the box, I should be clear on that, those two forces are both acting on the box and so they are definitely not a third law pair of forces. Okay, Those two forces are opposite, they're equal in size, but they are not a third law pair of forces. So well, what is a third law pair of forces? Well, first of all, you need to figure out what two objects are involved. They're going to be pushing or pulling on each other. And then describe the interaction with statements like this. And we're going to get some practice doing just that. Okay, so object A pushes or pulls on object B. And instead of A and B, you're going to fill in object names. And then you can say to the left or to the right or upward or downward or whatever it is. But the beauty of it is, is once you've written this statement, then all you have to do is just reverse them. So object A goes to there, object B, you switch it to the front, and then you change the direction. So let's see how that works. So here's an example. The bat pushes on the ball to the right. And so then when you go to do it the other, the third law pair to that, you just switch the order and you change the direction and then you've got it. Okay, so if the bat was pushing on the ball to the right, then you know the ball was pushing on the bat to the left. Which of those forces is larger? Neither. Okay, third law tells us they are the same size. Okay, it's an equal reaction. 
Okay, equal sized reaction force. All right, so let's try it ourselves. A girl walking a dog. Okay, so the girl's holding on to the leash which is attached to the dog. And so there is the force of, we'll call this force one, girl pulls on the dog to the right. And so then we just take these two objects and we reverse them. Dog pulls on the girl to the left. There we go, we switch the direction. All right, you see those same two objects, we just switched them and we switch the direction. Which one's larger? Neither one, they're the same. All right, let's try a couple more. Windshield, I'm just going to abbreviate, pushes on the bug to the right. Doesn't matter, we can pick this however we want. And then we just switch this down to here. We say the bug pushes on the, what's it pushing on? The windshield. Which direction? Whatever way we picked before, we just do the opposite. Okay, so when a bug splatters on your windshield, the windshield pushes on the bug, but the bug pushes back on the windshield just as hard. Okay, these are equal. All right, a baseball is in free fall near the surface of the earth. Now, this one's a little bit harder. So a lot of people write gravity pulls down on the ball. Hmm. And then you get stuck because then you're like the ball pulls on gravity. But there's nowhere to go from there. So let's get rid of that gravity. Now we can think about what's really pulling down on the ball. What is it? There's some object. That object is the Earth. Now we did write this statement a little bit different. I put the direction here in the middle. I could have written Earth pulls on the ball downward. It just was a little more natural to write it this way. But we can do the same thing. We can switch the order of these two objects to find the third law pair because this one's a hidden one. Okay, the earth pulls down on the ball. The ball pulls which way? Up. And what's it pulling on? It's pulling on the earth. Okay, and that's a hidden force. We don't think about that one. We're going to learn about Newton's law of universal gravitation later on. And you'll understand this a little bit better. But everything pulls on everything else. Okay, so the earth pulls on the ball with a certain amount of force and the ball pulls up on the earth with the same amount of force. And that one's pretty surprising. But the earth doesn't accelerate upward towards the ball very much because the earth has a lot more mass. And so that ties in the second law here as well. 